uh, Professor Judith Hidashi. Is that correct? Yeah, thank you. Uh, she is an applied linguist and uh, she was a member of, uh, already a member of uh, Hungarian Academy of Sciences and uh, she is professor of intercultural communication. Uh, she used to work for the Ministry of Education and served in, uh, in Europe and also in Japan, uh, very far from Hungary. And she was, she is a member of many uh, organizations, including IFSO. And uh, at the moment, uh, she, since uh, September 2012, she is uh, director of director for international relations of the uh, West Business School. Uh, her uh, presentation is in search of professional identities in the context of multicultural societies, which is exactly the topic of our. Conference. Thank you very much, dear organizers, uh, dear scholars, dear friends, thank you for the invitation and I am glad that I have again the chance uh, to be part of uh, the IFSO conference. This is already, I think, the third time or fourth time that I am on this conference and I hope to be so uh, also at the next one in Japan. Uh, well, uh, my topic is uh, about professional identity and uh, as uh, 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 social anthropologists and psychologists say, identity is a very important uh, notion for the individual but also for the society. Uh, social psychologists have had uh, interest in concepts of identity and individuality since his early days, tracing as far back as to the work of George Mead uh, in the 30s and his theory is focused uh, on the relationship between individual identity and society. In our culture, however, we are often defined by, by our careers and our jobs. In this sense, professional identity is part of our personal identity. We all hold multiple identities, both of the large-scale social identities like gender, race, class, as well as our relationships and professional identities like chemist or economist, doctor, or nurse or teacher. So it is the intersection dynamics of these diverse identities that provide or do not provide us with the feeling of satisfaction of self-approval and self-identity. Uh, Work-related uh, identities are important to people and often influence their sense of self more than do personal characteristics, such as gender, race, or ethnicity. Questions of work-related identity and identification arise primarily from social identity and self-categorization theories, which suggest that individuals adopt identities on the basis of social referent groups to reduce uncertainty and to enhance themselves. In the notion of collective identity is applicable uh, uh, which, uh, be it social or cooperational, is the shared sense of weakness. Collective identity is conceptualized as individuals' identifications of, identifications with, or attachment to certain groups. When used in different contexts, the term collective identity can have different definitions, among others, that of professional identity. In the process of forming uh, uh, professional images and professional identities, several components have a role to play. On the one hand, the perceptions exist in the society, demands of the career and expectations at work have a formative impact on professional images and professional identities. Professional image and professional identity, uh, however, are uh, to be distinguished various professional uh, images so to be based on impressions conveyed by the professional to the community, to society or to peers. Professional identity is more in the direction of self-definition, self-approval and overall self-identification. Uh, uh, even even uh, uh, at an early stage of one's career, one develops a range of beliefs and attitudes about the profession for which one is preparing. These sets of beliefs and attitudes and understanding about one's roles uh, uh, within the context of work generally differ to one's professional identity. On the other hand, with the advancements in the field of science and technology, 
there is an increasing need for the labor force to keep up with the ever-changing globalizing trends, be it culinary arts or business settings. This leads to increasing emphasis placed on the creation of professional image, which are perceptions held by one's colleagues. Professionals in our age are facing multi challenge, not purely in terms of how they execute their role, but fundamentally causing them to question their values, their competencies, uh, their up to datedness and ultimately their professional identities, what it means to be an effective professional in the 21st century. Uh, individuals hold multiple identities on the basis of various reference groups, and these identities are activated by situational cues. For example, an uh, individual may be active, uh, uh, may, may, may activate one social identity when at work, another one when at home with the family, and yet a different one when at dinner with friends. Cross-culturally, we experience great differences, though as for the gap between work-related identities and social identities of a personal nature. In high-context cultures, like in Japan, for instance, these identities seem less to interfere. So th this is why, uh, for instance, dark suited uh, salary men behave uh, uh, very, very oddly or strangely in trains, uh, because there, their other identity is activated, not their professional identity. Uh, uh, oh, and then at the low context cultures, in low context cultures, these identities are much nearer to each other. Uh, Wenger looks at identity as engagement in the world, but people have multiple sources of identity and ways of connecting. So affiliation to an organization, for instance, being a member of an uh, academic faculty is not enough to constitute identity. It is the experience of professionally being engaged in learning and knowledge creation to be able to interact with all kinds of situations in the workplace, be it fellow colleagues or students, so uh, it's this kind of active engagement which, which makes one uh, a, a real member of a community and uh, able to develop a professional identity. Uh, recent debates, I, I, I tried to skip a little. <laughs> uh, 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 recent debates concerned with work and identity emphasis the challenges brought about by the diversification of workforce due to globalization and growing multiculturalism in the working environment. Diversification of professional identity formation in multicultural societies is the result of enhanced mobility. Uh, the mobility in uh, both senses, in the uh, sense of social, social mobility as well as in the sense of cross-country mobility and migration. The common denominator for both mobility and migration is motion. Mo motion which keeps our world going. Im immigrant professionals a growing segment within current migration waves, but the determinants of successful transnational skill, skill transfer are poorly understood. Over the past few decades, certain countries in the developed world have attracted professional migrants from diverse cultural backgrounds with much needed expertise and the potential to make a valuable contribution to the whole society, for instance, Germany or Canada or New Zealand. Many, however, find themselves unemployed or underemployed in relation to their qualification and expertise. If we accept that we are defined by our jobs, then questions of personal and professional integrity, like if I don't have a job, what am I? Who am I? What if I don't like my job? Can I still like myself? Etc. Uh, migrants' uh, communication problems uh, can often be attributed more to lack of understanding of cultural and different communicative styles rather than to English proficiency per se. Socio-pragmatic skills pose a particular challenge for skilled immigrants because difficulties with subtle socio-pragmatic aspects of communication are often perceived negatively and interpreted as in intentional impoliteness. Identifying the communication challenges faced by skilled migrants is a complex task complicated by the undeniable fact that culturally different ways of doing things are widely regarded with suspicion and evaluated negatively by many in the receiving countries. 
The success of adaptation to the new multicultural environment is also impressed by the nature of various professions in terms of their cultural and linguistic dependency. Uh, for instance, uh, the scale of cultural de dependency uh, uh, is different for engineers, which is a technical occupation for physicians, medical knowledge combined with cultural skills, and nurses, where you have, we have medical skills plus communicative competence and emotional intelligence. So the resulting success or failure of occupational continuity reflects a complex interplay of context bound and individual factors, aggravated by the overall receptivity of the local labor market. Now, very briefly about Eastern and Central Europe, uh, uh, which represents a special segment where economic and political transition has not been accompanied by necessary changes in socially relevant and important areas, including gender issues. With the collapse of the old socialist regimes, new requirements appeared in the workplaces with respect to organizational and structural changes. In transition countries, as we call these countries, the workforce, both men and women, had, had, uh, has had to face not only the new demands of changes in technology and globalization, that calls for new skills and new ways of communication literacy, but at the same time they have been challenged by the process of learning a new working style, new working ethics, operating in a new working environment. Many were biased by getting disoriented as for professional identity. This was particularly applicable to most people with jobs well established in the old regime. Their authenticity their experience and their expertise has been shaped, which ultimately led to weakening of the sense of their professional identity. In several cases, their professional identity had to be reconstructed and it takes time. The changing landscape uh, of workplaces evoked the need for technology, the technologically literate, uh, literate open-minded, communicatively competent and intercultural skilled, work, skilled workforce. Multinational companies and organizations that began to operate in growing numbers in the post socialist countries were eager to find competent local workforce that could satisfy these new expectations. At the outset of the transition process, it was mainly the male workforce that was mobilized to fill in these newly opened job opportunities, particularly so in the managerial post. At the same time, uh, the shift in economy from manufacturing industries to a growing share of service industry has demanded the mobilization of competencies that women are traditionally better equipped with. Positions and jobs that require good communication skills, emotional intelligence, foreign language competence, ability of divided attention and concentration opt more for women workforce than men. It is not by chance that several jobs in the field of human resource management, call center service, reception office work, public relations management, consumer service, spokespersonship, secretarial duties have been occupied by women and with proven results. Women's share in organizational communication has particularly grown for the benefit of facilitating smooth communication and cooperation. It took not long before it became clear that in certain domains, uh, in certain domains, women perform better than men. Now, I, I, I will skip uh, this uh, video here, uh, but uh, if, uh, you, maybe you can find it on the internet. So much so that in 2010, results of the EEC, OECD program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies revealed that in Hungary, for instance, in all survey competencies, women outperform men. The competencies assessed the word literacy, numeracy, and problem solving in technology rich environments. The results have surprised experts who look forward to the new release of results that are due to be published in October 2013. Uh, now, uh, the uh, knowledge economy, uh, there are additional workplace competencies needed in the knowledge economy. Communication skills, problem solving skills, ability to work in teams, and ICT skills, among others, are becoming important and complementary to basic core and foundation skills. Even more than other workers, knowledge workers rely on workplace competencies. Women, particularly, 
in countries of Scandinavia and Western Europe are gaining and attaining legitimacy in this emergent field, Eastern Europe still has much to catch up with. Gender bias is an imperative not only when thinking in terms of social, social mobility and social integration, but also when striving towards a gender balanced culture in science and innovation. IMF chief Christine Lagarde, in her speech delivered at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, January uh, 2013, argued for gender equity and fairness and protection of women and children because, as she says, women. When women do better, the country does better. Uh, uh, the European Union's uh, Justice Commissioner, Vivian Reddy, is expected to set aggressive quotas and timetables to increase the number of women on the boards of public companies. I do not like quotas, but I like what quotas do, she says. In countries where there are legal quotas for representation of boards, the figures have grown substantially. In countries without obligatory quotas, progress is slow in this respect. At current rates, it would take another 40 years for women to have equal representation on boards throughout Europe. Reading has called for European countries to set them, themselves a target of women making 30% of board numbers by 2015 and 40% by 2020. Rising societal concerns and lagging economic performance forces European and in particular EU decision makers to work towards innovative strategies to become more competitive, sustainable and inclusive. To this end, human resources strategies should rely more on the hidden agenda of rising female power. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh,